cause havoc on Torchwood last night. In 2.6, Yanto gets killed, gets revived, and that strand runs throughout the rest of the series. Last night, I suddenly realised, wrong character. It should be Owen. You mean to say that the original plan was to kill Yanto off in this episode? Everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kevin. I am a geek. You are watching Kevin the Geek, and it is time for another Torchwood review. This one is series two. It is episode number six, Reset, and it features the return of Martha Jones. Now, this is kind of a two part week for the return of Martha Jones because today I'm obviously talking about Reset, which is where she comes into Torchwood, and tomorrow, as part of my Doctor Who review series, I will be checking out the two-part story of the Suntaran Stratagem and the... What's the second part? The Poison Sky. So, if you are new to the channel, then please make sure you watch this video, you subscribe to the channel, you like the video, you turn on notifications, so that tomorrow, when the next video comes out, you will be able to see that there as well. But, of course, today we are talking the return of Martha Jones. And, you know what? Thinking back, I do really feel that although Martha is a fantastic companion, I do feel that she was done quite dirty. And I feel that as a character, she isn't remembered within the fandom as fondly as I realistically think she should be. This is a character who was, in a way, kind of reduced to a love for sick puppy fawning after the Doctor. And, you know, it was the right decision to have her leave the TARDIS at the end of Series 3. And that made her an all-round better person. And, of course, she comes into Torchwood here... And she obviously returns in Doctor Who, you know, once uh, the Doctor has met up with Donna. And I feel that this could be argued, this episode reset. It could be argued that this is Martha's best ever episode in anything Doctor Who universe related up until this point. It was, you know, questionable at times. There could be a couple of episodes in Series 3 of Doctor Who where the, you know, the what she did would have been better for the character. But personally, I think this is probably the best characterization. And, of course, I'll talk about her appearances in later episodes of Torchwood and, of course, Doctor Who when we get there. But this is just based on this episode today. I love the nod to uh, series one, you know, uh, of Doctor Who, when Martha first comes in. And I like the idea that you don't see her straight away. Was it needed? You know, I mean, that whole sequence where she's walking through and meets the Anto and, and he kind of tells her then to go, obviously, to go downstairs, that was unnecessary. You didn't need that. Obviously, it had a nice little throwback to Doctor Who because you had the newspaper headline of um, the Slitheen from the Boomtown episode, which was the second story featuring Captain Jack, and of course that was in Cardiff. So, nice little throwback there. But I would say that this episode of Torchwood, um, similarly to how Martha has kind of grown as a person this episode shows how Torchwood as a show has grown and I think what I mean by that because I've, I've been very critical in some of my reviews of Torchwood I feel that there has been times that it has gone a bit too far in what it's tried to explore 
and this episode explores a good theme with a few contradictions which I will get to in a moment um, but it explores some interesting themes and also the general balance of the episode is far better than a good number of tortured episodes and so I feel that Martha and the show have both kind of grown as time has gone on and they can be looked at a little bit better. Now I'm obviously talking a bit of contradictions with some of the themes and what I mean by that is because you've got a very clear um, comparison of Torchwood as the Institute, not the show, the, the actual Institute within the show, um, and this, you know, farm, the, the medical research place. Because in reality, they are both the same organisation when you think about it. They are both, and let me just clarify, sorry, just briefly, um, pre- um, Gwen, really, pre-Gwen, um, because he, I'd say even the time when Jack was in charge, it was still kind of under the regime of Torchwood London, and it was very much, you know, arming the human race for the future, you know, and it is making sure that we are prepared and using the alien technology and stuff. And here, you've got a medical research place, which is in essence as well, arming the future of the human race by producing from aliens. So it may not necessarily be the actual technology, this is the actual aliens that are being scavenged and they are repurposing the stuff that's being left behind, i.e. the waste products, if you like, from the aliens. So of course, you have the weevils where they talk in the episode that they get some sort of pesticides from them. And then you also, of course, the big one being the reset drug, uh, which has come from the mayflies. And on paper, you'd think, yes, that is a great thing to do. If you have discovered the biggest breakthrough in medical knowledge, and you are effectively able to have a cure for everything, you could argue that is the best ever discovery ever made. The problem is the manner in which they do it is less than agreeable. And this is where the whole contradiction comes in. Like Jack has a major um kind of kind of philosophical um rant, if you like, towards um, the, the, the doctor within the, the, the facility. Aliens will die. They're already dying. This way they'll be put out of their misery. For God's sake, we're on the same side. No. Combating hostile aliens is one thing, but this is slavery, exploitation, a war crime. Now, what I find so utterly ironic is Jack goes off in this big, massive rant, yet maybe only about 10 minutes or so before when you had the assassin guy got captured and they're trying to get the information out of him, Jack basically uses the aliens as, for lack of a better word, his own personal attack dog. You know, it's, it's like someone going up to, you know, they're trying to get information out of someone and they bring a pit bull and they're snapping and snarling at them and they're saying, you know, if you don't give us information, I'm going to set the dog on you to attack you. It's the same kind of thing. And that was one thing that I just felt was quite hypocritical of the episode and a little bit uh, um, unnecessary. You know, I think they could have done it in, in other ways. But, you know, it didn't, you know, really undermine the point that Jack was trying to make, but it did undermine it at least a little bit. Now, this episode obviously does deal with a very touchy subject and that is along the lines of clinical trials and um in in a way you know kind of test subjects and i'm glad it didn't go too far into it because the idea of you know using test subjects there are some people out there who 
utterly disagree and think you know, unless you know that something is absolutely 100% safe, you should not test it on humans and you shouldn't test it on other animals, i.e. rats or rabbits or guinea pigs or, you know, anything like that. And without getting into a huge debate, I will say that nothing is possible to be 100% accurate and there will be risks that need to be taken and that goes for any of the medicines that we have on the market whether it is a simple paracetamol to ibuprofen to um you know drugs for aids or you know penicillin or you know basically anything and it's just you know, I'm glad they didn't go too hard in the whole test subject thing, which I feared a little bit when I first watched this episode, but luckily they held back just enough. Now, I'd definitely say the, the first kind of two-thirds of the episode is, is among the best this show has ever really done, and I feel that a large part of that comes down to the dynamic between the characters, and I feel that Martha was a fantastic breath of fresh air in this episode. So do you think you can get me one of those red caps? For personal use. I'm thinking Yanto might look good in it. You want uniforms? Get your own. Now, am I going to get the guided tour? Yes, ma'am. What have you seen? Ma'am. And it gave a chance to be a little bit more light-hearted, particularly in the last few episodes. We've had some pretty dark episodes. I don't really think we've really had any lighter moments in this episode. Probably since... Um, the, uh, to the Last Man, you know, the episode with um, Tosh and uh, um, his, his name's, you know, the, the, the soldier. Now, the reason I kind of mentioned that particular episode is because we have a big revelation and big scene in this one for the development of Tosh as a character. She finally asks out Owen. I was asking you out on a date. A, a date? You didn't realise. You and me? Yeah. I see. And you still want that? Yeah. And I'll tell you what. People I have spoken to don't like the idea of Owen and Tosh as a couple. But I freaking love the idea as, as them as a couple. And it's a sad thing that Tosh literally loses Owen pretty much the moment she finally gets what she wants out of it. Obviously, not in reality. We'll obviously talk about it later down the line. But I just wish they would stop Dick teasing um, Tosh. Um, now, obviously, in the opening to this review, obviously mentioned from, from the book The Writer's Tale that Owen wasn't going to die in this episode originally. It would have been Yanto. And it does make me wonder, would they have still gone down the route of the Owen and Tosh, um, you know, will they, won't they thing, had Owen not been shot. And if I ever meet Russell T. Davis, that is something that I would probably ask that question. You know, would they have still have done that? So I'd like to know the answer to that one. Or if you guys happen to know of an interview where he's mentioned that, you know, let me know. I'd, I'd love to, to know about that. But them two as a couple, it not only shows um, Tosh as a great character, but it shows the development of Owen. Now, I mentioned it last time out in the review of the episode, Adam. Obviously, in that one, Owen, you know, when Adam gets forced into his memory, he his um, behaviour changes and his thoughts change. And he basically, they flip it on their head that Owen is the one in love with Tosh. And I've said it in that review, and I'm going to say it here again. I think that 
Owen did love Tosh from way before, um, you know, we've really seen them on here. And because of what happened to Owen prior to him joining Torchwood, that, I think, is what prevents Owen from opening up. That's what makes him be a jackass to women. That's what makes him be so hard and tough on, on the outside because he doesn't want to go through the trauma of losing someone again. And unfortunately, Tosh now has to go through that with the death of Owen. And it is a really sad thing. And I think it probably would have worked better if they did it in the next episode. You know, for me, I almost wish there was a scene for Tosh getting angry with Martha for failing to save her. Because, you know, when Owen gets shot in this episode, she, you know, demands to Martha, you know, save him, you've got to save him. You know, this is for her, is the love of her life. And, yeah, that's just one little thing that I would say that was missed out on. I'll probably bring it up again in the next review, but I don't think it would have worked to put that in, into this episode because, obviously, at this point, you're trying to deal and land a very emotional ending. It is emotional, and I do cry still when I watch that scene. I cried today when I rewatched this episode. The only criticism I would give of that is the way that it happens. Um, more, more so to do with, with Aaron Copley, you know, the Doctor in, in this. And first of all, I just want to quickly say, Alan Dale, what a coup getting that man into Torchwood. Now, I don't know if Alan Dale appeared... Um, or rather filmed um, Torchwood or the other TV show that I know him from, which was Lost, when he played the fantastic character of Charles Whitmore. If you've never seen Lost, you know, I would highly recommend just seeing the stuff of Alan Dale as Charles Whitmore. He's, he's so good at being this really slimy and smarmy character whilst at the same time having this wonderful professional air to him. And that was kind of the case with his scene with Jack and with Owen in this one, that you just knew, and he knew, and they knew that he was lying. But you couldn't help just by kind of thinking, oh, could he be telling the truth? Just that little bit, he's got that just enough. Of a, even though you know deep down, yeah, he's lying. He's an absolute git here. Um, and I just love that that power struggle that he had between Jack and, and himself. That was a fantastic little scene. You know, I, I don't think that scene is one that would get enough credit for, for what it is. So I like that little scene. But yeah, th when he pulls a gun out and he, he threatens to kill Owen, then he shoots him and then... He just stands there when he then points a gun and he goes to Martha and he's just like, yeah, it's all happening. Yeah, I've just killed someone. Now I'm going to pause. Then I'm going to say, you're next to Martha. Whilst Jack just very casually gets his own guns out, has enough time to literally get the gun and aim and bang and shot and, pfft, and he's dead. Yeah, that's a little bit little bit silly. I, th I think that could have been filmed uh, uh, a little bit better, in, in my opinion, there. But other than that, I loved him as a character. And again, if I have one more critique, and this is from me being a geek, you know, um, it's that line, when Jack's talking about shutting down the facility, it was just a bit, eh. You know, it's when he talks about he's going to flood the, 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 the compound, with inert gases, um, which, you know, A, I don't like because, like, that would work because my knowledge of it is not, I mean, I'm not a scientist by any means, but my understanding of it is the inert gases would basically force the oxygen out. But you would need a shed ton 
to be able to do that. I mean, we're talking like tankers and tankers of it to render the whole complex, you know, inert. So, yeah, that that's just a little bit, for me, is just one thing. Again, you know, this, this is where my mind just goes off on a bit of a random tangent, you know. But, you know, that's just me. But overall, I just think this is a fantastic little episode. Um, like I said, the, the banter between Martha and the, the other members of the team was brilliant. You know, I, I really loved that. Um, and of course, they set up a freaking, you know, climatic uh, conclusion to the episode, um, which then feeds into the rest of the series. Oh, and sorry, just one other thing that I've literally just remembered as well. Um, the whole thing with the, the the assassin guy and the singularity scalpel and basically the made by basically getting burst out of his stomach. I don't know whether that was intended to be like an homage to the movie Alien. Um, but in a way, if that was their intention, I feel that is a an homage that has been done to death. And... In general, I wish that TV shows would now stop doing it. Because it now is a cliché. But that's going to do it to my review of Torchwood and specifically the episode Reset. Please again remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. And make sure you drop your comments down below Let me know what you thought of the episode. And join me again tomorrow where I review the Sontaran Stratagem and the Poison Sky from Series 4 of Doc 2, also featuring the return of Martha Jones. But until then, my name's Kevin, I am a geek, and you've been watching Kevin the Geek. Goodbye.